Hey guys, Andrew Sluter, pastor of Bible Baptist Church here in Asheville, North Carolina, coming to you with a video on John R. Rice's stance on divorce and remarriage. Many of you know who John R. Rice is. He's the founder of the Sword of the Lord magazine. He was kind of a forerunner of the modern day IFB church as we know it now. He was a soul winner, a fundamentalist, um, you know, did a lot of the good things for the Lord. And little known fact about John R. Ice, he actually had his own reference Bible. And I just recently obtained a copy of this reference Bible. And I don't agree with a lot of stuff in here. These got some good things that I do agree with. But in here, I thought it was interesting when I started reading some of the notes, I found out about his stance on divorce and remarriage. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read you some of the notes that he has in different passages about his stance on divorce and remarriage. The first one here is Deuteronomy chapter 24, and his note on verse number one, of course, if you know the Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 24 is a, uh, uh, is a chapter on divorce and remarriage in the Old Testament. He says, this easy divorce was allowed under the Mosaic law because of the hardness of your hearts, but he made the requirement more strict. He's cross-referencing Matthew 19, 8 there. God permits no divorce but for fornication, continued adultery. And then he cross-references Matthew, uh, Matthew 5, verses 31, 32, and Matthew 19, verses uh, 3 through 9. However, the divorced husband is not now her husband, but her former husband. Listen to this now. To be divorced and remarried means the former marriage is broken, whether it was right or wrong. Very interesting note there. All right, Hosea chapter 2 and verse number 2, he says this. Now, this is where uh, Hosea divorces Gomer because of her adulteries. It says this, The relationship between Hosea and his wife Gomer illustrated God's relationship with the nation uh, of Israel who would be carried into captivity. The Bible often uses family relationships as a type of our relationship to God. Israel was divorced from God for her adultery. But in the future, a remnant would be restored. God said he was married to the land, and as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. So interestingly enough there, you have John R. I. saying that in the Old Testament, God was divorced, which is exactly what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 50 and Jeremiah chapter 3. Okay, very interesting. Now watch this, Matthew chapter 19 and verse, uh, verse number 9. Of course, Jesus is being questioned by the Pharisees about divorce and remarriage. And Jesus says this in Matthew 19, 9, And I say unto you, whoever shall, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, there's the exception, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. John R. Ice's note on that is Deuteronomy 24, 1 through 4, records the Old Testament commands concerning divorce. Moses and God, because of the hardness of people's hearts, allowed divorce for lesser reasons. Christ never encouraged divorce. Always it is tragic and nearly, uh, and nearly always preventable. Divorce meant and still means the end of a marriage. The divorced person is not married and, and so is free to marry. The first husband is now her former husband, not her husband. So that whole two living wives thing, John Rice never believed in it. He goes on to say, Matthew 19, 9, restates what Jesus said in Matthew 5, 31 and 32. Fornication indicates continued adultery. I don't agree with him on that because he doesn't have any Bible for it. Fornication is simply fornication. Doesn't mean continued adultery. Uh, the course of a whoremonger or a harlot. Divorce is not commanded when a mate is untrue, but is permitted. Divorce is not commanded when a mate is untrue, but is permitted. Always forgiveness and uh, restoration of the marriage is preferred. Romans 7, 1, uh, Romans 7 verses 1 through 3 uses marriage as an illustration of the law. It is not intended to change Matthew 5, 31 and 32, nor is it meant to introduce a new doctrine of marriage. So if you go to Romans chapter 7, it talks about the death of a spouse being the reason why you can divorce, or excuse me, the reason why you're loose from a marriage. John R. I. says it just because it says death there and doesn't mention other places, that doesn't negate the exception here. 
So listen what he says in Romans chapter 7 about verses number 1 and 2 and 3. He says the general rule is used here only for illustration. It is not meant to invalidate the exception Jesus allowed in Matthew 5, 31 and 32 and in Matthew 19, 9. However, in the matter illustrated, the binding of a believer to Christ, there are no exceptions. We are so bound forever. Here's another interesting note. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and uh, verse number uh, 3. Verse number 3. I'm sorry. Verse number 10. All right. He talks about the unbelieving departing and all that. If the unbelieving depart, let them depart. Listen to what he says. The Lord said that marriage is not to be broken. It would be better to be apart for a time, not divorced, and then when possible for the mates to be reconciled. The Christian is not to divorce the unsaved spouse. If the unsaved spouse will not live with the Christian, he is not compelled to stay and must be allowed to depart. Exactly what the Bible says. Folks, here's the interesting thing. John R. Rice taught marriage the exact same way that Schofield taught marriage, which is not exactly, but almost exactly, the way that Dr. Ruckman taught marriage. Okay? Um, in fact, the only difference there would be John R. Rice said that fornication was continued adultery, which is not true. Uh, that's just him being wrong about it. Now, here's the thing, folks. We need to understand that the Bible is very clear about the divorce and remarriage issue. And John R. Rice believed exactly the same way, and it's very clear from his notes.